often depicted as a falcon because Heru literally meant the one who is above. And falcons are amongst the fastest birds of prey on earth. In the previous video, I speak about how our ancestors had different names for the sun at different stages of its cycle. At dawn, early in the morning, he was Her M Aket, the half falcon, half lion. The body of a lion was often included to emphasize the royal power of a god or a pharaoh in Kemet because the lion represented royalty. It represented kingship. The word lion comes from the Latin word Leo, which is the Western term for the constellation of Heru. This is the constellation in Kemet that was attributed to the great Heru, depicted as a lion throughout several depictions in Egyptian temples, often as a sphinx. The most famous sculpture in the world is the Great Sphinx at Giza near Cairo. And the sphinx is a lion's body with a human head. It represents Ra Horakti, the powerful sun god. Ra Horakti literally translates to Ra, who is Horus in the Two Horizons. The Great Sphinx is over 4,000 years old. The oldest biblical text in history is about 2,700 years old. And if you browse through the Bible, you find countless references to God being the sun. Nearly 200 instances of plagiarism have been discovered in the Bible. Immediate correspondences between Jesus and Heru. Heru, first and foremost, is a symbol of the divinity of the womb because he was the first ever story of immaculate conception. He was born of the virgin mother Oset, now known as Isis in Greek mythology. I do speak about this a little bit more in the African creation story video that I did on Girlboss SA, if you wanna have a look at that, if you wanna understand a little bit more about the Holy Trinity. Asa is the sun god of the spring equinox. He's often depicted as green because he represents the renewal of life in spring. Spring. Asa is the first house in the zodiac wheel because the spring represents the new year when everything is new. Heru, as the first miracle, is the original story of Jesus. Quotes like, I am the way, the truth, and the life come from scribes of Heru because Heru predates Jesus by thousands of years. So what's happening cosmically right now is that the sun is directly in what we now call Leo, Leo the lion. This constellation rules our courage, our confidence, our ambition, just like the lion displays these exact same qualities within the cycle of nature and the circle of life. Recently, you may have been hearing a lot about the Lion's Gate portal, a portal that opens between the 28th of July and the 12th of August. But the 8th of August is considered to be the activation day of this portal. And this portal opens because the sun and Sirius, the star Sirius, which was called Sobdet in ancient Kemet, as the sun orbits with the solar system through the Milky Way galaxy, it orbits in a binary with Sirius, which means that they, they orbit in harmony with one another. And it takes 24,000 years for them to complete complete a full cycle through the Milky Way galaxy and that's what determines the great year and the great year is divided into summer autumn winter spring just like the normal year cycle is just like the 24 hours of the day is I said in the previous video that the seasons of summer autumn winter and spring can be applied to the hours of the day midnight is our winter solstice um, and then 12 noon is our summer solstice so then obviously 6 a.m. becomes the spring equinox because that is the sunrise and then um, sunset becomes the autumn equinox because that is the sunset so that happens in the 24 hour cycle of the day it happens in the cycle of the year and it also happens in the cycle of the great year the 24,000 years that it takes for the solar system to orbit through the milky way galaxy it takes 24,000 years and it orbits together with the star sirius and the seasons of summer autumn winter and spring are split into 
what we call the Iron Age, the Silver Age, the Golden Age, and the Bronze Age. Not in that order, I don't think. I don't think I said them in the right order, but those are the four seasons. The Iron Age would then be the winter, which would be our darkest period, the time when we're furthest away from the star series, which means that we are the least spiritual. And our Golden Age is when we're closest to the star series, which means we are our most spiritual. And also the yearly rising of the star series, so the star sub debt, was really significant to our ancestors in Kemet because it was in direct correlation with the inundation of the Nile when the Nile River would flood and provide the land with all the nourishment that it needed for the harvest of the land so that people could be fed and life would be sustained. The yearly rising of Subdet and the inundation of the Nile used to happen around the 1st of January. That's how the 1st of January became the new year over time. So there are a lot of different ways that Sirius had very deep significance. If you look up at night the star Sirius is the brightest star in the sky it's part of a constellation called Canis Major which is shaped like a dog and it sits right at the collar of the dog constellation Canis Major that is Sirius astronomers call it the dog star and when Sirius moves into its closest proximity towards the sun just from our perspective from what we see when we look up in the sky and aligns with Orion's belt this is a time that represents the birthing of a new era in your life and the laws of nature dictate that the birthing process is painful and exhilarating so you can't expect it to be easy and you also can't expect it to be boring this is a time when we're being pushed to let go of what no longer serves us whatever isn't serving our highest and best evolution whether that's toxic relationships outdated ways of thinking with the influence of ma'at and leo we're all currently in a phase of reinvention especially because we're in the tropical season of ma'at so the combination of these two solar energies of tropical ma'at and sidereal heru or leo the lion the combination of the two solar energies influence us to get more organized and work more efficiently and just be more efficient in how we try to achieve our goals to work smarter Aligning with this energy means first and foremost aligning with nature, which means that we need to tap into the elements of the season and also match the energy of the lion by focusing, by strategizing, setting goals, setting intentions and executing to the best of our ability. Because this is a time that really supports results in our work. Heru rewards consistent efforts. When I speak about tapping into the elements, this is about igniting the four ruling elements in nature. When you pasla, when you pray, the four elements we know are fire, water, earth, and air. So you light a candle and however it is that you incorporate fire, water, earth, and air into your sacred ritual of connecting with your guides, with your ancestors, with the deities, the scientific components that we know as deities in African cosmology. And it really is about the ways that work best for you personally or culturally. For instance, I I use Mpepo, which is quite cultural, but it really works for me on a personal level. And I use other things that aren't necessarily viewed as cultural, like crystals, even though crystals are very African. I use shells, seashells, which are really good for incorporating the water element. I use bones, feathers, snaith, whatever it is that I feel called to use at specific times for specific rituals and specific intentions it's really just about you and your own calling that will determine what you use and how if it's something that you're really struggling to figure out your birth chart can also help you understand which colors and which elements help you connect the strongest because the comedic calendar tells us which deities in the cycle rule which elements so when you know which season you're born in then you can identify which tree, which metal, which stone, which color, which scent, and which incense helps you connect the strongest. And knowing your birth chart can also help you determine what your purpose is. It helped me to understand what I've been chosen to do because everybody's been chosen for something. And the key to identifying what you've been chosen for is by identifying your natural abilities, which reveal your strengths and your talents. These are all mapped out in your birth chart, especially in the combination 
combination of your sidereal and your tropical sign because these two sun signs define some of the laws of nature that we're at the mercy of just like women are at the mercy of the cycle of the moon our menstrual cycle is a manifestation of the lunar cycle built into our cosmic bodies so the woman is a physical manifestation of Unom Kubulwane, who rules the waters, just as the moon rules the tides. The waters nourish and facilitate birth, and that's why the womb is filled with water when creating new life. Africans always understood that the Holy Trinity was the mother, the father, and the son, because that's in alignment with nature. That was the Holy Trinity, and later became the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit in Christian texts. The Holy Spirit is the mother, and that's also just according to common sense it's just basic physics that male energy needs female energy in order for creation to take place males cannot reproduce amongst themselves even the resurrection rebirth and renewal of the green god asa during the spring equinox occurs only because of Osset's action of reassembling his body. Women were highly venerated in African spirituality. Women had more rights in ancient Kemet than anywhere else in the ancient world. I mentioned in the previous video that kings often ruled with their mothers. King Shaga, one of the most powerful Zulu kings in history, was obsessed with his mother. He slaughtered anyone who didn't mourn her death after she passed. Currently, the king of the last absolute monarch in Africa, King Swati of Eswatini, also upholds the ancient Swati practice of ruling with his mother, Indlovugati, the Queen Mother. And I think in honor of Women's Month and in the spirit of feminine divinity, I'm gonna end this video by wishing all the women watching this an empowering Leo slash Ma'at season by encouraging you to push that business. Really set your sights on the next level of whatever it is that you're doing, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. Aim high and go for it. Don't limit yourself. Set intentions, set goals, be courageous, embody the lioness. Because the season isn't just about the lion, it's about the lioness too. Remember the lioness is the one that goes hunting for the pride she goes out to fetch the food that sustains the rest of the pride so the pride cannot survive without the courage and the prowess of the lioness and the lioness knows when to move in stealth mode and she also knows when to pounce so align with that energy align with your courage and listen to your body know when it is that you need to be in stealth mode pace yourself when you need to rest and when you see the opportunity to pounce girl go for it Align with your true nature and follow your light. Yeah.